Uh, David Baldwin, uh, Matthew Modestino from, from Splunk. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, our Splunk's integration um, with our Kubernetes and EKS. And uh, first of all, I'm going to walk through a quick session overview in terms of what we're going to, what we're going to cover. The first part, uh, for those of you who don't know Splunk, we're going to do a quick introduction in terms of the background, what Splunk does, uh, talk about um, some details on our connector that we built to integrate Kubernetes and EKS into Splunk. Uh, but the big bulk of the content will actually be related to the demo in terms of the actual integration, uh, walking into the blog and some of the screencasts associated with that. Uh, so for the first part, uh, for those of you who don't know Splunk or do, uh, have not been deeply involved with that, we're one of the biggest, if not the biggest big data company uh, out there currently. Uh, we handle anywhere from uh, small to large enterprises, including the majority of the Fortune 100. Uh, also, we have a very impressive scale uh, as necessary. So we have customers that can deploy single node, small environments uh, up to very, very large environments, including multiple petabytes of information. Uh, in terms of our mission statement, and this is actually core to a lot of the work that we do with the uh, connectors that we create and our different dashboards that we create, is that making our machine data accessible, usable, and valuable to everyone. Uh, so we do that with the, our ecosystem, our plugins and utilities, including our connector. But a lot of it actually comes down to the dashboard that we create. So Splunk is a very, very powerful platform and system to take your data and be able to interpret, it, interpret that data to give you insights, uh, aha moment, uh, whatever the situation may be, but very, very powerful situation from that perspective. We're able to take uh, structured, unstructured data, uh, push that into a situation where any question that you have come up can be easily uh, interpreted and, and, uh, and used in any uh, different, different type of lens or a different type of environment. Uh, performance at scale, we hit this in the very beginning in terms of the, back, the, back, the background in terms of where Splunk exists. Uh, we can do single node, small environments for uh, smaller enterprises or small companies getting started up and also the major enterprises as well. Again, multiple terabytes. Uh, hybrid cloud, you can deploy on-prem uh, or you can actually deploy in the cloud. Uh, we, you can utilize the uh, Amazon service to be able to deploy your Splunk environment and also integrate with uh, EKS as well. Uh, we do have an artificial intelligence machine learning platform, but the, peak, but the key part about today's integration is our open ecosystem. Uh, so we built a lot of our, uh, our current configurations in with CNCF. Uh, Splunk is a sponsor of CNCF, so we want to make sure we actually use those uh, products and programs, but also work with uh, our key partner with AWS and the integration with uh, EKS. Uh, jumping into the, um, some background in terms of our connector, uh, so customers have been moving data into uh, Splunk, Kubernetes data into Splunk for some time. And uh, they've been asking us more and more in terms of having uh, something concrete they could build upon uh, to utilize to get their data in. Because previously they were using different methodologies looking for a solidified approach. And so the four principles that came up, uh, simple, secure, um, um, scale, configuration. Uh, with the simple conf configuration, we managed that through Helm. And so we utilized the Helm project within uh, uh, CNCF to help deploy and manage that. Uh, simple and secure, so we started off with Fluent D and we added additional configurations to make it much more scalable and reliable as well. And with that configuration, it's three different components. We have a logging component, a metadata or an objects component, as well as a, as a metrics component. And all these different pieces can operate independently as necessary, or if you need to, you can choose and pick the ones that meet your use case. Uh, but basically what ended up happening in this particular example is that you have the cluster, master, node, and pod uh, events, data, and metrics that get streamed through our connectors and, into, and through the HTTP event collector, uh, then eventually into Splunk. The end goal is a basically an example of what you actually would see here, which is basically a dashboard showing your EKS environment, the health of the environment, the metrics in terms of actually how it's performing, and the overall uh, 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 scalability from that as well. And resources, quickly, we are actually, we have some content located on GitHub, Ruby, and Docker. And from the demo perspective, we already have the EKS environment set up. Matt, Matt's going to walk through the, uh, the Connect for Kubernetes and as well as the dashboards as well. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I'll move real quick here. Just, I know I'm, it's tight. So let's take a look at jumping right in. So I'm going to take you through getting up and running with Splunk Connect for Kubernetes. Um, and we're going to pick, pick up where the Amazon um, user uh, walkthrough Take, um, leaves off. So we have our Amazon EKS cluster configured. We're running our, our guestbook app as part of the, the example app that we deploy. And we're the proud new owners of some new EC2 uh, infrastructure that we're going to have to take care of. 
So if you look at that's more from the AWS view, from the Kubernetes world, for the Kubernetes administrator, uh, from the command line, it looks a little bit like this. The EC2 nodes that you saw there are now my worker nodes in my Kubernetes um, cluster. And now I have uh, the pods to run my guestbook, Redis, and some uh, system nodes. So if you jump over to Splunk Connect for Kubernetes in our GitHub repo, um, we get you uh, everything you need to get set up. Um, we're gonna show you here an integration to Splunk 7.0 so that you can get our metrics. I've set up quickly for the, uh, for the overview uh, three indexes in Splunk, one for logs, one for metrics, one for uh, metadata that we're gonna collect. All that, all, the only other re prerequisite from the Splunk side is a HEC token, which you just saw there. And then we're gonna jump in and make sure that Tiller is installed in our namespace so that we can manage uh, Splunk Connect for Kubernetes moving forward with package updates, et cetera. Once we've got Helm installed, um, or be, because the reason we used Helm is because now we've boiled uh, a, a complex configuration down into a one-liner. And basically all that's required from the user is a values file to tell us a little bit about your environment and to configure the collector in a manner that works for you. All the spec files are available on GitHub, but I'll just show you mine. So here you can see a simple values file where I use my hex token as a global variable, and then I uh, provide uh, small tweaks to the logging objects and meta charts dependent upon my environment. So for example, where's journal D? Uh, or which endpoints from the API do I, wanna, do I wanna pull? So quickly I just run one single command. The Helm charts will install. Once the Helm charts install, if we zoom in, you'll see what we now have in our cluster is uh, a daemon set of three worker, uh, three pods to do our logging, and then one single deployment of a metadata pod that's talking to the API to get us some enrichment information, and then a metrics pod running Heapster. Again, the logging and metric pods run FluentD with our own HEC plugin. If we flip over to Splunk after we've deployed, now you have three uh, places you can look for some data. Here we have our Docker logs, and the one major thing for our customers is to embed some metadata into those logs to make them more usable. Those become keys that we can then look up against the metadata index that we have to, be, to start to provide a very powerful view of your logs. You're now starting to add context to your logs. And correlation and context is what Splunk has always been about. Um, so what, I'm, what you're seeing here is just kind of the raw data. I've clicked down into an objects pod, and I'm just kind of getting a state of all the pods, nodes, and different objects that I care about. What can you do with this data? Well, in our Docker IT monitoring repo, we have a, a sample app. This is just something that I built as a Splunker right in the interface itself, just outlining some key uh, objects that I'm keeping a track of, and I can see the overall logging trend and what pods are erroring. And, and provide an easy click down for my users to not only learn Kubernetes, but to explore. So here's an example where we've taken some really raw data and we presented it in a really usable manner for those that might not be up on Kubernetes. A lot of the customers we're talking to are just learning about it. Uh, and so in this place, we're allowed to get a novice user to explore a namespace, look at a pod, understand what its configuration looks like, and then have its logs easily uh, prepared for you at the bottom of the screen. Obviously with Splunk, the best part about it is you can always drill right down to the bottom. So obviously I can drill right into these raw events. Now this is traditional Splunk. What's something new about uh, Splunk in 7.0 that you might not know about us is we have a metrics first uh, UI now. So metrics are now a first uh, citizen inside of Splunk where if you integrate the metrics into our metrics store, this UI populates on its own. No more SPL, no more having to know queries, click and, and drag your way to a curated dashboard and allow your SMEs to work with Splunk data a lot easier. Now we've gotten something for the Kubernetes side of the house um, and for the people that will be working in the application development side, but what about the infrastructure? What about those EC2 nodes that we had there um, that I'm still gonna have to take care of? Well, Splunk Insights for Infrastructure is a free product that we released not too long ago. You can run this for free up to 200 uh, gigs a day uh, in uh, ingest, or sorry, uh, total uh, overall for free. Um, and here, I was, it was as easy as me adding my IM role to Splunk Insights for Infrastructure, and now I am pulling and discovering all the architecture that's inside my uh, Amazon uh, account, including those EC2 nodes that I was running in the US West and the volumes that are with them. It gives me a great way to add logical context where I've grouped those EC2 nodes, uh, or sorry, EKS nodes, uh, to make sure that we know what they look like, and now I can easily see my CloudWatch metrics uh, in an easy to use GUI, and I can always correlate back to my events from the cluster as well. So really just trying to cover for both the, the, the dev side, the Kubernetes and the app side, as well as for the infrastructure side, and that's only two of many other lenses that we could look at data from your cluster from. So that's about it, thanks for your time.
come join us. Good, how are you? Welcome. So I have a question. So as probably one of the first chief culprits of just having terabytes of unstructured log data <laughs> hanging out in S3, um, what are some tips that we could all take away on how to structure and work with our logging data so that it's, we get all these things like nice dashboards and metrics that you just showed us in the demo. Do you have any tips for how we can tag and structure our data so that you don't turn out like me and <laughs> try to figure out how to work backwards from an incident? Well, actually, we're, we're your dream come true, right? Because we don't require yeah. structure, right? So that's the greatest thing. I think the one thing I will take the chance to opine about, maybe get on my soapbox as someone trying to I learn about it. Kubernetes is, Docker mm -hmm. logging can be hard to deal with. Yeah. So it's, um, it's one thing to say, hey, give me my Docker logs, but it's another thing to say, but wait, that JSON log you just gave me is actually an access combined log that I want to unwrap and use from there. So that's what we really concentrated on with our first iteration is to make sure we can bring that data in for Splunkers and for new Splunkers to use the kind of knowledge we've gained over the years on how to parse well-known things like your front end pods, like your back ends, whatever you're running, without having to deal with that kind of added metadata that Docker is wrapping it in. So, and, so in, in, and otherwise, you don't have to structure your logs. I, I'm not trying to impose a it. bad habit, but I mean, with Splunk, you don't have to. So that's the greatest part. I have plenty of bad habits. So that's, that's <laughs> hey, I'm glad to keep them perpetuating them. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, we're going to take just one min more minute before uh, we switch over to the next one, because we need to steal your microphones back. <laughs> um, so Chris is over there, if anyone wants to, to donate their mic to a good cause. Thank you. Thanks. A warm round of applause for these guys.